Now we're gonna remove all the bolts from the valve cover and we're gonna remove the valve cover. We'll see what's going on with the valves and with the timing chain because the timing chain tensioner is already losing it and we found a few timing chain guides in the jet ski. So we're gonna remove it to see what's going on under. Probably the insurance made an estimate. This is why they removed it. cover have a gasket the gasket looks good so we're gonna put it on the side and take a look here as you can see the timing chain already was removed so in case if somebody was trying to spin the engine there is a probability that the valves are already bent inside I don't know if you can see it there is a timing chain guide inside it fell down right there and I don't see the timing chain at all Probably they forgot to put it back or it's on the bottom somewhere there. We're gonna remove the camshafts. The chain? Yeah. Chain I don't know if you can see, but the chain is right there on the bottom. I barely can see it. So now we're gonna remove the, the camshafts, the intake and exhaust camshaft, and after we're gonna remove the cylinder head. Да, я пропал на то, да, еще раз. We removed both camshafts, intake and exhaust. And the only thing I don't like right here, all the valves are closed now, except one. This one, the exhaust, one of the exhaust valves, it's still open. There is a probability that the valve is bent, this is why it's not closing all the way, or the spring is broken. So now we're gonna remove the cylinder head and see what's going on inside. Now we'll start to remove all the shims.
as you can see inside there is a shim this shim is for the valve clearance when you're doing the valve clearance you're replacing usually these shims they're selling it on amazon and ebay you can find them and if the clearance is bad you need to replace the shim as you can see it's moving inside you can there as you can see this is the shim that goes inside and it have a size on it this is 189 almost all the shims are removed we left just these two and one of them i don't like it because it's not closed all the way this valve is open so now we're gonna take out these two shims and we'll see you will see that this valve it's like deeper inside now we're gonna remove them and we're gonna remove one two three four five ten balls like this and we're gonna take out the cylinder head there is a shim inside let's check another one yeah there is also a shim inside we thought maybe they forgot to put the shim back but the shim is still inside and as you can see this valve is deeper inside it's not closed all the way so there are two things that can happen or this valve it's bent and this is why it's not closing or the spring is broken now we're gonna remove a cylinder head Every bolt has a washer. Don't forget to, to take out the washers too because you'll turn around the cylinder head and you're gonna lose all the washers. Now before we are gonna remove the cylinder head, we need to remove the chain tensioner it's attached in two bolts here and one bolt that is going into the block so now we're going to take it out actually if you want you can remove it together with the tensioner but before removing you should remove this bolt that is holding the, dip the dipstick because it's, it's attached the bottom piece to the lower engine part of the engine and this one is going to the cylinder head so now we're going to take it out now we're going to remove the chain tensioner the upper bolt has two washers as you can see each side has a washer don't lose them and two bolts like this all the bolts are removed so now we're gonna remove the cylinder head this is the gasket we're gonna remove the gasket now like this. From the top everything looks good except this exhaust valve 
that is open. And right now, look from the bottom, you will see it that is open. As you can see, the only valve that is open is this exhaust valve. The cylinder ha had it removed and look inside the cylinder are rusted because it was water inside and I don't know for looks like it was sitting for not so long actually because it doesn't look so bad. I'll try to use some brake cleaner or something and try to clean this rust. I hope the cylinder is still good because like doesn't look like it was sitting for such long time. So now we're gonna try to clean the cylinder. Michael, say hi. There is a sign that the valves in this cylinder touch the piston. As you can see, there is a mark and there is a mark. And also, this piston is stuck, it's not moving at all. There is a probability that the piston road is broken. This one is moving, this one is moving, this one is moving, and this one is stuck. So now I will try to spin the crankshaft and you will see which one is moving. These two are moving. The last one, it's moving, and this one, it's not moving at all. Try to clean with brake cleaner a little bit the cylinder, and after I'm gonna add some oil, so the probability that the piston is gonna scratch the cylinder is lower, and after I'm gonna try to do a 360 turn to see if the piston road is gonna push this piston up or not. But be careful because there is, if you're gonna spin it, there is a probability that the piston road can touch the cylinder and can do some scratches on it. So if you're not sure what you're doing, better don't do it at all. We're gonna do a 360 turn of a crankshaft and you will see how three, three pistons are moving and one it's stuck. I thought that the piston rod is gonna push it up, but looks like it, it probably it's broken completely. I used some engine oil and now we can freely spin the crankshaft and you see all the cylinders moving except this one. To remove a piston, we're going to remove the, we're gonna drain the oil, we're gonna remove the oil pan and we will see if we have access to remove the lower part of the bearing that is attaching the, the piston road to the crankshaft. Probably there are broken parts in the oil pan of the piston road. I'm we'll trying to spin it and to drain the oil because on the bottom I don't see any bolts, so I will try to spin it here on the side. It's one bolt. Probably the, that one is a drain plug. So let's. Let's spin it and see what we can do. Now we're gonna remove this bolt and see if the oil is gonna come out. Looks like the oil has some water in it. It's dirty. Now we're going to drain all the oil and remove the oil pan.
we just removed all the bolts around the oil pan they are all the same size except this one that goes right here as you can see it's a smaller one There is a timing chain inside and now as you can see we are able to remove the oil pan. Now we can remove the, the oil pan and as you can see wow 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 even the engine block on the bottom it's cracked you can see a big crack right here and these are the parts from the engine bay this is our piston road we can find all the parts and after we can solve the puzzle here is one more part it's aluminium part from the engine it was somewhere here as you can see here it's supposed to be closed here is another piece of aluminium and inside there it's another part of the piston road this is another part let me see where it goes mm -hmm. this one goes like this now we can just weld it and install it back of course I'm joking don't do it our broken piston road As you can see, this is our another part of a puzzle. The bottom piece of a piston road. The bearing is good. Now we're gonna push up the piston and remove it from another side. This is our piston. The cylinder looks good. So what should you do in this case? In this case you need to replace the engine or at least the bottom part and the new new piston road and new piston. But I will give it a try and I'll try to fix it and we'll see how it's gonna work. I'm gonna try to remove the, the piston road. I'm gonna replace the cylinder itself. Also doesn't look so bad. It has some scratches because of the parts that felt inside. But the, the cylinder looks good. I don't see on the top of the cylinder any big scratches. It doesn't mean, mean it's good but I'll give it a try and see if it's gonna work and as you can see it have two rings one two and the lower one it's for the oil 